I have all my alternators taken apart here. I, there's another video I show how to take them apart and put them together. In this video I want to show how to test them. I'm going to test the rotors. These two slip rings are connected together with some resistance, but they can't have any connection with this or they're no good. 4.2 on that one and there should be no connection between those and the body so I'm getting nothing on there. The recommended uh, is 3.1 to 3.5 so I'm not sure why these are a little bit higher. So the other thing we want to look for on these is that they don't have big grooves in them. This one's nice and smooth so it looks in good shape. This one, if you can see it, there's a this slip ring on this side is good. This one has a deep groove in it. So that's not so good. Okay, on this one I took the stator off from the rectifier unit. This is the rectifier unit. This is the stator. This one has four wires. The other ones all have three wires. I'm not sure why they're different. But these wires should all be connected together. Between one and another one, I should get continuity. Yeah, it's like 0.3 ohms, which is basically nothing. They're connected together. This one, 0.4. This one, 0.3. Uh, these are good. And then I also want to make sure that these guys are not shorted out to this outside here. I'm going to scrape off a little piece and make sure I got good contact. Yeah, there's no connection there. Now I cut these off. You're supposed to unsolder them, and I tried to unsolder these, but some kind of high temperature solder. I don't know, my solder iron won't melt it, no matter how long I leave it plugged in. I tried to torch, but then I burnt that out. <laughs> anyway, these are the diodes. These are connected to the diodes, which connect to your uh, output here. Where This is the wire that goes up to the main fuse box. So if I want to check these uh, diodes, I hold one end on here. And then I'll touch the other end to the diode here. And that's connected. I got 2.25 ohms. Check the next one. 2.23. The next one. 2.75. Next one. 2.4. And some of the difference between those might just be because of the... I'm not getting good contact here. Now what I want to do is switch my... Cable. So I'll put the red one out here and then try it. I should get nothing. I gotta try to do it without touching the anything except this one part right here. Nothing, 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 nothing. So you can see that all four diodes on this one are good because all four let the electricity flow one way but not the other way. So those are good. Now on the other ones, I didn't disconnect them because I cut that one off. I can do the same thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to touch my wire to each one of these four diodes here. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to set this down so that I'm not touching it with my hand. And I'm going to measure with the red one out here on that bolt. And then, so I got uh, an increasing resistance. It's going up, 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 up. Okay, going up, up, up. Next one, same thing. It's going up, okay. So since they're all connected together, I can see that they're all doing the same thing. But if I switch my cable around, and I'm going to do the same thing again, go through them one at a time. First one, 1.5. Second one, 
1.5, third one, 1.5, fourth one, 1.5. So I'm pretty sure that means that all my diodes are good. And there's no short. I can double check for shorts by checking between any one of these wires and the outside of the rotor or the stator I mean outside of the stator there's no connection there's nothing these are the brushes and they need to stick up about a half an inch and these look good these look good on here these other brushes these look really good they're nice and long so there should be no problem there those are good brushes these brushes on this one you can see they're really short. They're wore out. That's why I cut it up to be an example. And then one other thing to check is this one right here. This is the capacitor. Yeah, it's supposed to be 0.5 microfarads, but my meter here doesn't read microfarads. It reads little infarads, so I'm not sure what that means. It's like nanofarads or something, so and I had to clean these off a little bit so I have a piece of bare metal connect from the bottom in where the where the capacitor connects and then anywhere along the side case of the capacitor I'm measuring 457 and I think that's like nanofarads and it's supposed to be like 0.457 microfarads if I check uh, this one that I took apart, 463, if I check uh, one of these other ones here, 457, I think those are good capacitors. Clean them up and put them back together. Now I have a contraption set up here to try to test my alternator in the shop. Uh, I got an old uh, quarter horsepower motor from another machine I used to have and a battery and here is a brand new alternator and I have it hooked up from the main terminal here that's going into my uh, voltmeter and the negative side of my voltmeter is connected up here to this bar to ground and the negative side of the battery is also connected here and then I have one extra jumper wire the only thing on the positive side of the battery this one connects to the IG terminal Whoa. The, from your point of view it's the one on the right that's the IG terminal and this one is from the plug-in it goes to the uh, dash uh, combination meter and this one's not used it's not even there's no wire going to this one but what I'm going to do is hook up that wire from the positive side of the battery to there that should cause the electromagnet to work so that the alternator will start working the wire from the positive side is not connected to anything so there's no complete circuit. So if I turn on my motor, okay, spinning right along, and I'm actually reading a little tiny bit of voltage, 0 0.04. Now, if I take this positive wire from the positive side of the terminal, I'm going to hook this up, now this thing slowed way down, the alternator just got harder to turn, it's the belt sliding, my voltage is going up to 2.6, it's just because uh, it's barely turning right now. And try to put some pressure on this and some pressure on there. Yeah, more if I get it to turn a little bit faster, my voltage is going up. 
I can't, uh, my contraption here is just can't get it to spin fast enough to get full voltage. Take this off. I'm going to take it out and put in one of the old ones that I tested before, and they tested fine. Okay, this old alternator, I tested the inside, all the parts passed the test that I gave it, and now I'm going to try it out. It's not hooked up to the IG terminal. Turn it on. Oh, it's spinning pretty quick. Now, uh, oh yeah, I got about uh, 0.13. So it did slow down a little bit. It's still going pretty quick though. And I'm cranking out about ten and a half volts here. But it's it's going faster. It's also making some kind of noise. So I think it works, but just not as good as the new one. Watch what happens to the, as I disconnect it. It's still turning it's about the same speed it looks like to me. And of course now it's disconnected, the voltage is dropping. The new one, when I disconnected it, it sped right up. When I connected it, it slowed way down. With it disconnected, I can just spin this old alternator. <clears throat> if I hook up a positive current through that IG terminal, like that, now it's way more difficult to spin. So that tells me that this alternator is probably good and will work, just not as good as a new one. Okay, this is my other old alternator that I painted yellow. Try turning it on. Alright, it spins pretty fast and easy, even with the sloppy loose belt. Now it's reading 0.14. Let's see what happens when I hook up the IG terminal. There was no difference at all in the speed. Uh, voltage went up to 0 0.39, 0 0.4 I guess, and it's just spinning away. If I take this off, it drops down, still spins the same, hook it back up again, nothing, no difference in the, how hard it is to turn, reading like less than half a volt. Okay, take my belt off. This is hooked up. I don't feel any resistance in there at all. Disconnect it. It's still the same. Even though I tested all the parts of this alternator and they should be working, I don't think this alternator would work at all. I think this a dead alternator. It's like the electromagnet part is just not magnetizing. So that teaches me that maybe those uh, internal tests are not, they're not everything you need to know. This thing passed the test, but it still doesn't work. I don't know why. Anyway, that's about it for my alternator study. I'm just going to put the new one in.